Greetings, fellow portal masters. Greetings, fellow portal masters. I am Crash Browser, and once again, time to Crash Scouts with another top five video. So, I mentioned a way back when I was going to be doing 12 top 5 videos, but I reduced it to 6. You're still going to be getting 6 weeks of back-to-back -back videos on Saturday, just saying. And they're going to be a lot like my favorite levels in the Skylanders franchise. And if it isn't obvious by the yes, sign right here, we're starting off with a big bang. We're starting off with the top 5 best Sparrow's Adventure levels here on the channel. Now, the worst thing about this list is you can easily see what the number one's going to be in every single one of these, because you can just go back and watch my Crash's favorite series from Crash from this last year. But... We're going to be doing a little bit different this time. You know how I usually sit here and talk to you guys and the video comes up on the screen? Well, this one here is actually me standing here talking to you and the video is going to come up like right around here somewhere. So I'm going to be doing a little in real life thing where I'm talking to you guys and actually chatting and stuff. And this little format we're going to be doing for a little bit. If you guys do enjoy this, maybe I'll continue doing this format for top five so I can just stand here and talk to you guys and move my arms around and stuff. Unless you just want to see the gameplay stuff. So for the next six videos, for all my best levels, this is how I'm going to be doing it. So let me know if you enjoyed it or not in the comments below. And while you're down there, let me know what your favorite level is. But we'll talk more about that at the end. So, as I continue rambling, we're going to continue rambling and actually talk about levels. Starting off with number five. So kicking out the list of my favorite levels at number five is Tree Top Terrace. Now, honestly, it was kind of tough to between this one and Falling Forest, but I'm actually not a huge fan of the boss battle that one there, where you go and you actually take on the other three uh, life characters. I'm not a huge fan of that one, so I decided to go with Tree Top Terrace. One of the biggest reasons is because of the really cool puzzles that was involved with this. Um, it's really good to have a speedy Skyliner in this one, you know, Bash, just saying, or Stealth out for Flameslayer, but Bash. Um, so what I really like about that one is the fact that you can do so much more in that level when it comes to puzzles and going from point A to point B. There's a lot of good battles in between there too. There's a lot of new Skylanders get, or enemies get introduced, especially that wasp who stings you when you freeze, which is kind of good. Chill Bill, are you watching? That's how you actually do it. You actually fight them after two, just saying. But <laughs> regardless with that, one of the cool things all about the level is the fact that there's so many puzzles and they're very unique. It, like. There's the one where the spikes come up and you've got to try to get across when the spikes are coming at you. So you're like, how in the world am I going to get that? And you got to go and get on the ledge and wait till the spikes come back and go on the ledge and go past the thing and then go all the way back. And I really like something like that. I love the part of the beginning where you got to maneuver through the bouncy um, plant things. It's a really fun level. It's a perfect little level. Plus, before that, it introduces you to Arbo, the fun of Larbo, which is pretty great. So yeah, number five is the Treetop Terrace. Number four is actually a reason why I don't enjoy Falling Forest, but why I enjoy this level. It's the Leviathan Lagoon. So this level itself is great. There's a lot of actual challenges that's involved with the, Le the Leviathan Lagoon. It's hard to say, say that five times fast. Um, <laughs> the one thing I really like about this level is the fact that it's a bunch of islands that you gotta hop across. There's not a huge exploration to it, and that's the one thing I'm a little iffy on, but the boss battle at the end where you take on the three water skylanders and those sharks coming at you, it's fantastic. Um, first of all, there's an achievement and a, or a trophy for doing that. If you actually got to avoid a certain amount, it's easy. Just do Terrafin and go underneath them. Terrafin can't hit them. There's your achievement if you don't have that. But I really like that one because I feel like that one's not as hard as the other ones. As weird as that sounds. Um, you take on Gilgrunt, Slam Bam, and Zap, if I'm not mistaken, like the clones of them, and they're not that hard, and it's more fun than it is challenging, and the fact that when those sharks come out, you can actually heal up. It's one thing I really liked about that. The cool thing about the level, again, as I said, it's involved in a lot of challenges, so each level is different. So when you play a challenge, it's not going to be the same exact layout as the last one. And the fact that if you use a Water Skylander or Stump Smash with his uh, Soul Gem, you can actually explore outer worlds of it and go all the way out to other islands and basically bypass a huge part of the map if you wanted to. And that's one thing I really like about it is it pushes that creativity and gives you a reason to use other Skylanders, not just the ones that are supposedly given to you, you know? Stay on the path, don't need to. That's one thing I like about that. So the Vibe of the Goon gets number four on the list. So number three is probably the best level to level up Skylanders. If you only have Spiders Adventure and you're trying to figure out how to level up Skylanders level 10, Crystal Eye Castle is the best one to do it. First of all, the castle itself is so much fun. Right at the beginning, the very first scene is Diggs getting blasted away with a barrel. If you didn't know, I hate Diggs. So, I love that scene, and I love that level just for that reason. But then the level itself is huge. It's a really big level. You gotta go to each little part of the castle and destroy the area, and it breaks it down. And that's one thing I really enjoy about that. 
Lots of awesome enemies in this one too, with a little bit of puzzles mixed in, and it honors exploration. So you can always take the little path, but there's always a little side path you can go to that leads to a part that you need to get to later on, which is one thing I really like. Plus there's this really big side area that you go to, and you go into like another whole place. So instead of staying on the actual path where you get the three, you actually get four places to fight enemies. That's one thing I really like. The cool thing too is that the actual battles themselves, they go from really simple to actually kind of hard, especially when the guys are on top of the pillars. That's one thing I always found really fun, the fact that the level actually gets harder once you get into it, and it's not just the same linear level all the time. Crystal Light Castle is so much fun. If you haven't played that one yet, then you clearly haven't played Spyro's Adventure, because that's one of the biggest ones where you get the glass eye for the, uh, for the, what's it called? The core. The core of light. Wow. Skylander fan, I swear. Number three is Crystal Eye Castle, and, honor, and deservedly of this spot, in my opinion. Number two is a personal reason why this one is number two. I know I was talking about the best levels, and they're always my reasons anyways, but for this one here, Pirate Seas has to be number two because of the fact that it mixes some of my favorite elements. If you've ever seen in my top five favorite games video, I talked about how much I love Pirates. Pirate Seas is that. So you're, first of all, you're playing against Pirates in a match game, which is hilariously easy, <laughs> and, but it's really fun. That's the thing. I love match games. I've always been a fan of match games, so doing that in Skylanders was like a very interesting thing. And they kind of had to keep it, you know, a little bit kid-friendly and make it super easy. Like the first one you face has six, and you, it gives you a minute, yet you can finish it in basically five seconds. <laughs> Then when you get all the way up to like the 30, I think it is, or 26 or 30 that he has, they give you like three minutes and you can beat it in like 30 seconds if you manage it properly. Um, it's And along with that, I love the actual level itself. The aesthetic is so cool from get, going around and fighting all the pirate enemies. Along with that, the characters that are involved. One thing I really like though is the final battle where you hop in a pirate ship and then you go around and destroy this island of pirates that are shooting cannons and all this stuff. And you actually become an old pirate shooting on the ships. And then you get on the island and fight the final guy in a match game. And that's one thing I really like. And the really cool thing about this is it actually is a level pack. So it comes with this little ship. And it comes with uh, Terrafin. And a couple other things. But mostly the ship part. But yeah, that's one thing I really like about that level. It's probably one of my fa It's definitely one of my favorites in the entire franchise. Just because it's one of those fun levels. Um, not enough to get number one though, because I have a reason for the number one also, but yeah, Pirate Seas is definitely number two on the list, and it's so much fun. If you haven't played that level, you need to. It's one of the most unique levels you're ever going to play. If not, just go back and watch um, the Dragon Lock episode. It's the last episode of the actual Dragon Lock, not, like the Redux, so go back and watch that one. You'll see me tear through it, and it's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, number two. Let's go to number one. And number one is the Stormy Stronghold. Stormy Stronghold has a place in my heart. When I first played this level, I loved it. So the first time I ever played Spyro's Adventure was actually in a playthrough on my old channel uh, called Pushpin Gamer, which was before Crash of Skylands, the most recent channel before Crash of Skylands. And I first played it, and when I played Stormy Stronghold, that was the one level that I actually explored and actually went out of the way and was like, man, there's actually a lot to this. The enemies themselves are not really hard, but I love the fact that there's puzzles mixed in with this one. So the really cool thing is you get to the actual br bridge itself when you're trying to storm the stronghold. Get it? Stormy stronghold. Get it? <laughs> you get to a part and you go in and there's a teleporter. So you teleport and you go to another island. You're like, wait a minute. And then you go back. When you're going to that teleporter, you're taking out chompies along the way. And then you get ambushed at one point. I love the little part where you got to go out and spin the things down. And then when you get to the actual storm hold, it's a stronghold, not storm hold, stronghold itself. I love the fact that you go past and you see these bars up. And you're looking at the bars and you're saying, man, how do I get in there? There's got to be some way. So you're hanging out there for a little while. There's those witch pitchers throwing things at you. You're like, geez, how in the world am I going to get them too? Then you continue on and you get to this big battle where there's two charging guys, a couple of the lance throws or whatever they're called. And then you step on a little pressure plate and that gate goes down and you have like 10 seconds to get there. And you're like, oh man. So you got to drop everything and boot it back there to get that soul gem. I love that. The final battle itself is excellent, where you actually get the air elemental, where you go and you take on a couple of those brawly guys, a couple of drill dance masters, whatever they're called, and the um, the hot, not hot air, airhead or whatever he's called. I forget the actual name of it. Blowhard? No, that's from Spyro. But yeah, this level is so much fun. It's definitely one of my favorites. It's one I always like to go back and revisit when I'm playing Spyro's Adventure for sure. If I ever have to record footage for a clip, for Spyro's Adventure, I'm always going to play on Stormy Stronghold because it's definitely one of my favorites, and that's why it's number one here on this list.
And there we go. That is my top five best Spyro's Adventure levels, as you can see. Next week, we're going to be talking about the Giants levels. This one was actually pretty easy because there's three of them I really enjoy. So next week, come back to watch that episode. I'm doing this every week until we get to Imagineers. When that finishes, then we're going to be hopping in something else. I'm thinking maybe every Giants ranked. Well, we'll talk about that later, maybe. But ladies and gentlemen, if you guys enjoyed, let me know by leaving a like and a comment below in the comments. Let me know your favorite level of Spyro's Adventure. And if you agree with my list, if you don't, as long as you're respectful, we'll be respectful back. But ladies and gentlemen, come back next week for another episode of The Giant Lot. If you're new to the channel, welcome. There's a lot of new people popping up recently, and thank you all so much for watching. I try to upload three times a week, maybe four. Just saying. <laughs> but yes, if you enjoyed, let me know by leaving a like and a comment below. But as always, I beat you.